Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. I know this video is a long time in coming, but we got motors turning under oak and DMM's DYN4s. Uh, but what I want to go over now is I want to go over um, the basic setup procedure for uh, Dyne 4, what you've got to do with the DMM DRV software, and then what needs to be set up in the Centroid software. Uh, I'm just going to go over some basics. I'm not going to get into too much detail, just a brief overview. Okay, so let's go over setting up the DYN 4. AC servo drive for use with uh, Centroid Oak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the DMM DRV software and then we're going to connect to the drive and I'm going to let I'm going to do a detect COM port. It says possible COM port on 3, possible COM port on 4. So I'm going to go ahead and try COM 3 first. Set COM port Okay, it wasn't that one, so let's try four. Com port successful. You look down here, it says we're connected. So we're going to go ahead and go into servo setting. We're going to choose Dyne 4. And we're going to go ahead and read from this drive so you can take a look and see how um, the basic settings. Now, this hasn't been tuned or anything, but this will get you going. Um, I'm reading from the drive and it says notice servo enable active low checking this box will require the enable input to turn on the servo motor active low equals servo enabled when input is low servo drive needs power cycle for changes to take effect so you'll notice right here so this box needs to be checked so servo enable low now I'm going to go from the uh, document that DMM sends out. Um, there is a video. I'll put a link in the description below that uh, goes over the basics of setting up a Dyne 4. And then it says set Dyne 4 servo drive enable logic to active low. And I've already got that checked here. Set DYN4 drive into position servo mode. So here it is. It's already in position servo mode. Again, this is a working drive. Normally it'll come defaulted to RS-232 and this box unchecked. Um, but again, I, this video, the purpose of it is just showing the basic setup to communicate with Centroid Oak. And then set the gear number and the line number. You'll see I have gear number set to 2000 and I have line number set to 2000. Okay. So that's it. We set the servo drive into AB phase command input mode and it is set that way. And then we set servo mode into position servo, and it's set that way. We set enable active low, we check it. And then we set gear number and line number to 2000. And uh, with that, we just save these parameters. Confirm, save all parameters into servo drive. We say yes, and then watch this box down here where it says last operation. Saving parameters, all parameters saved. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read from the drive just to make sure that they're all set all parameters read and you can see everything's all set up okay all right so let's go ahead and close out of this and uh, I'll minimize this for now and we're going to start up CNC 12 okay um, you can see because I exited CNC 12 and came in Came back in and it wants it to be reset and I don't need to reset it. So I'm going to go into um, setup, config, 137, enter. We're going to go into the parameters. We're going to click on parameters. And we're going to go to parameter 256. which is right here, and we're going to change that to 2. There's a legend down here that says precision. So we're putting it in precision mode. Auto delay enabled enables a precision mode delay parameter. So that's, that is set. Okay. So I've already changed that to 2, and when you've changed it to 2, you go down here and you click save. All right. 
Now we're going to go into uh, machine motor. And since we set the line number to 2000, we multiply that by 4, and that becomes our encoder counts per rev. So you can see I have them set to 8000 here. All right, so those are all set to 8000. So once they're, the three axes are set to 8000, we save it. Okay, the last thing to do is set up precision mode delay. So to do that, we go to uh, setup, config. 137 and we go to PID and then we go to tune. The motors are free, they're just sitting on the ground. This is something you'll want to do once you have the motors belted or connected to the machine as a uh, last setup procedure. So let's just press cycle start and let it calculate. Okay, there it's doing X. There's Y, and there it's doing Z. Okay, so it wants to set the delays to uh, 50 milliseconds each. So we'll just hit F1, and the delays are set. And that's all to, there is to this, and that pretty much concludes setting up Oak for Dyne 4. Okay, what I want to demonstrate is something that I uh, brought up to DMM's attention here a couple of months ago and they had been working on it. And that's the ability that when you you cycle the C-stop, it resets the drive. Previously, it wouldn't do that and you had to power down those drives. So right now, it's running a program. There you can see the motor's turning. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it cause a fault. I'm going to go over to this drive here and let you see. You can see the LED is green on that Dyne 4, so I'm going to cause a fault by removing its encoder cable. You can see the LED blinking. These stop contact are released. And we have a drive 1 fault. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reconnect the encoder cable. You cannot reset that drive by pressing the virtual control panel reset button. You have to press the e-stop button to cycle through a fault. So I'm pressing it. Emergency stop detected. I'm going to release it and you'll hear the e-stop relay close. It is closed. And you'll, you'll notice down here that the drive is reset. And that was important. Otherwise you'd have to power down the whole thing and restart. So now I'm going to go ahead and start that program again. Tool change. And there you see it's running. And there you see motors turning again. So that was a big deal. Um, in order to uh, get these drives properly working like other drives with uh, the Centroid Oak hardware. Now let's go over the basics in uh, this back panel and, the, and its connections. Okay, I've gone handheld to give you a brief overview of uh, this, this back, particular back panel set up with oak. This is the documentation. Um, it's, this is the draft. I've asked for a, a newer one. It goes over the servo drive cable um, and its connection. It also has setup notes. It's basically what we just went over. Um, in two spots here it says gear number set to 8192 and line number set to 4095. Just set them both to 2000 um, and then in oak set it to 8000. That's just a simpler better way to go for testing and so forth. There is a schematic that they provide and uh, if you have a holding brake it goes over setting up the holding brake. Um, uses an external power supply and uh, output 9 on uh, oak will control that brake. So that's if you have a spindle with ball screws and linear rails, um, you'll want to have a brake on the z-axis. Here are the servo drive communication cables connected to oak. Axis 1, axis 2, axis 3, X, Y, Z in the case of a mill. If it's a lathe, axis 1 is Z and axis 2 is X. And then you'll see the cables running over here to the Dyne 4 drives and the DB25 so the 
motion signals and control signals go in the DB25 and coming out of the DB9 are the encoder signals that go back into Oak making this a, a true closed loop system okay and then uh, th these are 240 volt input DYN4 requires 240 volt input on this particular setup so all drives are set up with 240 volts you'll see that uh, L1 and L2 is logic power and then R and S is motor power so you'll see logic power is coming down to a filter here and then through a pair of fuses when the, when the control comes up that is energized so logic power is applied at the same time as O gets its power and that's important now motor power here you see it here is coming down and going through an e-stop contactor and this contactor does not close and apply 240 volts to the drives until um, CNC 12 tells it to do so um, when you first bring up CNC 12 and you press the e-stop cycle it it'll put it online and uh, the contactor will close and apply power but motion does not occur until you you uh, try and home the machine or you go to MDI or before homing it as you jog it each individual drive will be enabled at that point okay um, I follow the centroid schematics which includes an e-stop relay and a 15 position terminal block they provide schematics that way and just saves me a whole lot of grief and trouble um, creating schematics from scratch now over here on this side this is the logic power supply for for Oak it also provides a 24 volt logic for the inputs right here okay then down below that is a is a uh, 24 volt AC this powers the e-stop contactor the coil on the e-stop is 24 volts AC and it's wired through the e-stop button so the e-stop button let's take a look at that really quickly here's the e-stop button I'm using now you'll notice it has two contact blocks one contact block signals oak that it's been depressed or released and the other contact block is in series with the e-stop relay on oak so the contactor itself does not get power until this this e-stop con contact is closed on oak and until the e-stop button is released here and then the circuits completed and it'll energize the relay and that's the right way to do it so if I hit the e-stop button that relay will open if Oak and CNC 12 discovers or sees a fault it will open that relay alright um, that's pretty much it um, I tend to use fuses versus breakers um, you know to each his own on that one I use fuses they're typical 30 amp 250 volt fuses you can get them at the home center so they're easy enough to get I don't use anything that you can't get locally but uh, fuses tend to react more quickly than a cheap breaker so I mean it's uh, basically it's a testament to um, all the work that uh, we did to get the DYN4 AC servos to work with Centroid now again this isn't on a machine yet so I'll be installing an Oak and three Dyn4 drives and uh, their AC motors on a Fadal TRM tool room mill and in some upcoming videos I've got to build a panel for it I'll do more in-depth videos on the installation there